Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The first phase of the DSH investment project in Vieux is coming to fruition with accompanying opportunities for St. Lucians. The NCPC to focus on research and innovation in the drive for competitiveness. St. Lucia's award-winning Lovely Sheridan gets buddy support for Sufria Primary School. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyo. The first phase of the Desert Star Holdings DSH investment project in VFO is coming to fruition with accompanying opportunities for St. Lucians. The newly built horse racing track on December 13, 2019 will welcome the Peter Cup. In anticipation of this new economic avenue, the National Apprenticeship Program has facilitated the training and certification of more than 20 persons, Janelle Norville reports. 24 individuals have successfully completed an entry-level training course in the grooming of race horses. The training was facilitated by Groom Elite Program Inc. out of Stanford, Kentucky for the National Apprenticeship Program. Executive Director of Groom Elite Program Inc., Dr. Reed McClellan, explained that the individuals received extensive training in the caring and maintenance of race horses. The training began with learning horse behavior, anatomy of horses, health of horses and diseases and injuries they may be susceptible to, and how to treat these injuries and prevent these diseases. Dr. McLennan emphasized that regular horses and race horses are very different and thus specific training is required. One of the horses you might have seen, Charm, is the name they gave this chestnut that's in the stall right beside me here. And all of these horses that are here are what they call half breeds or beach ponies and stuff and we measured them the other day they're around 14 hands tall and they weigh between 600 and 670 pounds the horses are going to be coming in here are going to be between 16 and 16 and a half hands tall and they're going to weigh between a, a, a thousand and twelve hundred pounds so they're going to be about twice as big as the horses we're working here they're also going to be faster they're going to move quicker and as i've been telling them you have to stay on your toes to keep that horse from being on your toes the training is in preparation for the most anticipated event, the Pito Cup, hosted by the Royal St. Lucia Turf Club, scheduled for the 13th of December 2019 at the newly built horse race track in Vifort. Some 42 race horses age ranging between 2 and 3, purchased by the China Horse Club and participants, are expected to arrive in St. Lucia sometime in October. Participant Jeshrin Andrew indicated that the training will assist participants in securing employment. I think one major limitation uh, with young people being able to access uh, employment is the fact that there's a limitation in terms of training opportunities for those young people. And I think that it's imperative that we often try our best to give them the opportunity to receive those training, those programs. I think also it is, it is necessary that we, we, we notice that many of those young people here today are young people who are passionate about the industry. They, they, they come here because they have a love, they have a drive, they're interested in horses and, and it's a career that they want to develop for themselves. So I'm very pleased that this program has been rolled out here in Viewfort at the horse race facility and I think that um, I, I'm hoping that it is something that is continued and not just for the grooms but we see training for the jockeys, we see training for the farriers, we see training for trainers and other persons who want to develop themselves within the industry. Participant Moza Mofat expressed gratitude for the opportunity. Basically my goal here is to become a farrier and stuff like that. You know, over the, the two weeks we guys have learned a lot and based on what we knew and what we're learning now is very important because we um, learned the very new things, things that was alien to us, you know. And I thank the, um, the, the doc for, for, for giving us the knowledge. The group commenced training on September 17, 2019 and is anxiously looking forward to what's in store. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The Government of St. Lucia welcomes the news that the Government of Canada has opened a visa application centre in St. Lucia. This follows continued dialogue and advocacy by the Government on behalf of the people of St. Lucia with the Canadian Government. This means that St. Lucians wanting to travel to Canada will save on the additional costs to process applications in other islands. The Government of Canada was asked by the Government of St. Lucia to consider, among other things, the deployment of a mobile system that would alleviate the need for travel. While other OECS countries have been the beneficiaries of the mobile system, beginning late August, that operating framework is periodic 
and necessitate travel to those countries by officials from the Canadian High Commission. The Permanent Visa Application Centre in St. Lucia will process a visitor, student and work visas. The centre in St. Lucia is managed by an outsourcing and technology service entity that provides visa processing services to the Government of Canada. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC, has unveiled its week of activities for the sixth edition of Productivity Awareness Week, October 14 to 18. The week also coincides with the sixth anniversary of the NCPC establishment on October 18, 2013. This year, Productivity Awareness Week focuses on the vital role research and innovation must play to stimulate and drive competitiveness in St. Lucia. Productivity Awareness Week was created to build awareness of the issues related to productivity in St. Lucia, while increasing dialogue between public-private sector entities. The event is organized by the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC. Director for the NCPC, Fiona Hingson, indicated that the theme for this year's observance is embracing competitiveness through research and innovation. For Productivity Awareness Week, we always say to the public, you know, take this time to reflect and you, what you've been doing for the year. Have I been productive? Um, what can I do differently? What can I incorporate into my business processes to make a difference? Or how can I um, motivate my staff in order to be more productive? Productivity is not only about the worker, it's also about the, the business owner. It's about everybody doing their part. Productivity Awareness Week will be launched on Monday, October 14, and will feature a theatrical presentation produced and directed by Drinia Frederick. An exhibition and health fair will also be staged on the grounds of the Finance Administrative Building in Point Seraphin. And the day will culminate with a television panel discussion on the topic, How do we achieve a more competitive St. Lucia? On October 14-15, to 15, the Research and Policy Unit in the Department of Finance will stage a research symposium under the theme, Research, a platform for innovation, competitiveness and growth. Gemma Lafayette is the Director for Research and Policy. So the areas of focus for this year's research symposium are on the real sector, more specifically agricultural production, also on the social sectors, looking at issues related to education, health and poverty, as well as environmental concerns, looking at the impact of climate change and natural disasters, and also on financial matters, also looking at the, well, some issues surrounding um, deposit growth, as well as um, electronic payment systems. Resident representative for the ECCB in St. Lucia, Sharon Ferdinand, said the ECCB is happy to once again partner with the NCPC and will present the future of the EC currency, the digital EC dollar, on October 16th. She said the information is relevant to everyone, from the small to large business operation, the A-level student to the ordinary man on the street. We are proud to present on the digital EC dollar. Um, we want persons to know that this is not any way involved with the other digital currencies out there. It is just a different format of the EC dollar, offering another alternative for payment methods. On October 17, the NCPC will host an open day for select businesses to utilize the NCPC's productivity measuring tool called the Pro Tool. It is expected that 12 businesses will participate in this exercise. The Department of Economic Planning has also partnered with the NCPC to stage the final event for Productivity Awareness Week on Friday, October 18. Stanza Deligny is the representative for the Department of Economic Planning. Well, the final activity to commemorate Productivity Awareness Week is the Department of Economic Development's Exposition de Développement Économique. So on the 18th of October, students will be educated by ministry officials on the six key areas for the medium-term development strategy, uh, also how it links to sustainable development and our overall national development plan. For more information on the activities for Productivity Awareness Week 2019, you can visit the NCPC's Facebook page by searching St. Lucia NCPC. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. St. Lucia has joined the Republic of China-Taiwan in celebrating its National Day. The Honorable Prime Minister Alan Chastney, along with a delegation, visited Taiwan 
to join in the celebrations there. While at home, the Governor General saw Emmanuel Neville Snack and Mr. Snack, Raquel Jubilee Chastney, Honorable Andy Daniel, as well as Cabinet colleagues and the Diplomatic Corps celebrated. Acting Prime Minister Honorable Ezekiel Joseph said the decision to establish relations with the Republic of China-Taiwan some 40 years ago continues to bear tremendous fruit. We are seeing that both of our countries are benefiting from that decision. And I remember my Prime Minister when we came back in 2016 when we had a, a dialogue with the Embassy he made it clear that the relationship should be a two-way relationship. The people and the government and people of St. Lucia should benefit. Likewise, the government and people of Taiwan should benefit from our relationship. And we can say here today, we are accomplishing this. The acting prime minister highlighted the accomplishments in agriculture where farmers are getting back into the banana industry. Technical support led by the Taiwanese is also forthcoming in other areas. Apart from agriculture, we are seeing that in the, in the health sector, we are benefiting. In the education sector, we are benefiting. In the IT sector, we are benefiting. And I can go on and on as it pertains to the areas that we, the people of St. Lucia, are benefiting based on the relationship that we have established with the government and people of Taiwan. As part of the celebrations, a St. Lucian contingent traveled to Taiwan to take part in the Taichung Jazz Festival and Taichung Instruments Festival, including Ronald Buhingson, five members of the band and technical personnel. Taiwan's 108th National Day celebrations took place on October 10, 2019. Some 768 graduates from across 16 Caribbean countries will graduate from the University of the West Indies Open Campus on Saturday, October 12, 2019. The presentation of graduate ceremony will be held at the St. John's Pentecostal Ministries St. John's in Antigua starting at 10 a.m. Of the graduates, 561 will receive undergraduate degrees, certificates and diplomas, while 207 will receive postgraduate qualifications. During the ceremony, the University of the West Indies will confer honorary degree on Governor General of St. Kitts and Nevis, His Excellency Sir Samuel Weymouth Tapley Seaton. He will receive the degree of Doctor of Lawyers and LLD for outstanding public service to his country. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. How do I decide which telecommunication service provider to use? When choosing a mobile, landline, cable TV and internet service provider or changing the one you currently use, here's what you should think about in order to get the best service to meet your needs. Why do I need the service? What is the quality of service offered? What are the rates? Are there hidden charges? How much can I afford to pay for the service? What are the customer service obligations of the provider? Not satisfied with the service? The choice is yours whether or not to use the service. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome once again to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Work on the Sufremini Stadium upgrade continues, despite some setbacks due to interventions by adverse weather conditions. Base work for the FIFA-sized football field and the athletic track are at an advanced stage. Stephen Bringhurst is a contracts manager at C.O. Williams, the company engaged during this phase of the upgrade of the facility. Well, essentially, you can see from, the, from behind us the, the progress we've made. We've done the main cutting and filling and the grading. The, you can see the rectangle in the middle, which will be the, the soccer pitch eventually. What we're working on at the moment is the base for the running track. So the project in, includes a full-size soccer pitch and uh, athletics track. 
not only will you have uh, athletics, running events, you'll have uh, long jump, uh, shot put, and all other sort of subsidiary events associated with a athletics um, event, basically. Said Sevier Hayden Thomas disclosed that the surveying aspect of the project went as expected. The, the field is um, of FIFA standard, the size and um, the levels, the drainage, the slope in, um, is like a crown from the center. A crown and then if you could realize we have the racetrack all around it, which is over 0.75% um, with a drain at the middle of them, just between them. It is expected that sword turning ceremonies will be held in the coming weeks in various districts to mark the continuation of the sporting infrastructure redevelopment policy of the government of St. Lucia. Now for some results of Indesco's netball competition under 19, Division 2. Beanfield Comprehensive defeated Clendon Mason Memorial 26-21. For Beanfield Comprehensive, goal shoot Zoya Jamari scored 23 from 35 attempts and goal attack Diaz Fontalio 3 from 17. For Clendon Mason Memorial, Michaelina Hunt scored 17 from 25 attempts. Aglissa Seeley, 4 from 5 attempts. Under 15 netball, Shrizel Secondary defeated Barbano Secondary 22-9. For Shrizel Secondary, goal shoot Nadine Regis, 14 from 26 attempts. And goal attack, Veleni Gustav, 8 from 15. For Barbano Secondary, goal shoot Vincentia Edward, scored 3 from 7 attempts. And goal attack, Josan Lewis, scored 6 from her 10 attempts. And that's your update from Youth Development and Sports for this weekend. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. In the wake of the issue of bullying in schools, Bank of St. Lucia and founder of the internationally applauded Buddy Ambassadors Program, Lovely Sheridan, are fighting back. The bank donated a buddy bench to the Sufre Parmi School to help foster friendliness and inclusiveness among the students. Bullying is a global epidemic happening in St. Lucia and all over the world. While it took the likes of a local video gone viral to alert some to the dangers and reality of bullying, there are others who have taken a more proactive approach. Bank of St. Lucia recently partnered with the founder of the Buddy Ambassador Program and donated a buddy bench to the Sufra Primary School. Branch manager Aleta Reid Mitchell says that BOSL Sufra is always looking for ways to positively impact the community it serves. We've done quite a bit of work in Sufra, especially with the school. So this was easy for us to come in and to donate this buddy bench to the Sufra Primary School. Um, it's important to us to have the children in the community be positive influences on each other. And so we like to be part of this as well. So today, this is what we've done. We've donated this bench and we hope and expect that the Sufre Primary School students will use it to their own benefit. According to founder Lovely Sheridan, the Buddy Ambassador Initiative is an anti-bullying program that aims to create a culture of being a buddy in schools that is encouraging students to be more kind, friendly and inclusive to each other in and outside the school compound. Today, at the unveiling of the Buddy Bench, Ms. Sheridan spoke to the students about the importance of being a buddy and utilizing the Buddy Bench. The Buddy Bench basically is, is a tangible tool to put the message into practice. So basically, I'm, I'm telling the kids about being a buddy and being kind, including others. So with the Buddy Bench, if a child is feeling left out, if they feel like they need a friend, they need somebody to talk to, they need somebody to play with, they will sit on that bench and a buddy will come up to them and, you know, say, hi, hey, is everything okay? Okay, and talk to them and include them and so sometimes children don't have ways to express themselves so it's just sort of like a serve as a metaphor a tangible tool for them to go there and for others to reach out to them the principal and staff of the Sufre primary school were more than happy for the initiative and support from BOSL who was able to bring it all to fruition since we are a CFS school a child-friendly school we have come on board to take the initiative because we have seen that Many of our students complain about bullying. We at Sufra Primary School, we want to reduce or eliminate bullying and taking on that initiative, we are assured that our students will be able to be good buddies and don't bully others around. Bank of St. Lucia over the years has supported several initiatives geared at combating some of the social ills plaguing the nation's youth. 
From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Paramus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Quayor. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arquea. Monsieur Nisher, Monsieur Madame, Department of Responsabilité pour Information and Gouvernement de GIS. Je suis la télévision nationale de la NTN, car vous êtes nouvelle accueil. Vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Le département qui est responsable pour la police et la sécurité nationale, qui fait un appel pour les citoyens de ici, fait un effort pour connaître plus de trafic moun à façon de l'esclavage. Vous êtes moi, la nion grand initiatif pour faire public la au courant et puis le problème ça là, avec les gens qui ont des informations, ça crée à sou yon link téléphone spécial, yon sa téléphone 847, et bien TIP, n'importe le, pou bay ou apò à sou pièce ka, ki yon apesi wè, kote yon moun, et bien plizye moun, ki yon ba kontrol fason eslavaj sa la. Se polis la, ka yon pou aksyon imidyetman, pou kondwi investigasyon, ek pa, ek ou pa oblige volante non, sou pa vle. A wepons pou situasyon Trinidad, kote polis dekouver operasyon kote plizye moun, et en bas d'esclavage, le département de sécurité nationale, c'est ici, qu'a conseil public là, au point attention à la situation, ça là, qui s'est fait à cette ici aussi. Situation en Trinidad, c'est yon côté, police tenue pour un soukou, mais qu'on y passe, pour 69 moun, 4 ans yon, c'était femme, qui était en bas captivité, en dedans yon l'église. Tout c'était citoyen Trinidad, sorti à l'âge 20 ans, pour 60, et yon tout terminé. Le rapport de la police a dit qu'il a conduit l'investigation avant d'avoir été fait et que le résultat, il a arrêté six personnes dans la connexion et la situation. Le public a dit que j'ai trouvé une invitation pour utiliser les outils d'information de l'agence qui a gardé en ces affaires-là, qui a développé spécifiquement pour faire le peuple au courant concernant la situation mal foutue. En yon adresse, il y a une cérémonie spéciale pour observation, célébration, journée nationale à pays Taïwan, il y a eu observé à cette ici. Représentatif pour le Premier ministre cette ici et le ministre des Affaires agricultures, honorable Ezekiel Joseph, féliciter le gouvernement Taïwan à ce grand jour là, mais plus toujours pour de grandes collaborations qui a existé à cette ici et puis Taïwan. Honorable Ezekiel Joseph parlait de de grandes ces pays là, j'ai accompli. Eh bien, ça y aura accompli à bas de pour Taïwan depuis le DPA, ça a entré dans la relation diplomatique. Le représentatif premier ministre a placé un peu d'importance à ce support financier et technique qui s'est laissé déjà recevoir et qui a continué pour recevoir pour Taïwan. Il mentionne grand support à l'agriculture, à l'éducation des technologies, la santé et l'éducation généralement. On a vu que Joseph Bay pour mettre là qui s'est laissé, qui a continué pour supporter le pays Taïwan pour trouver l'acceptance de la nation. En parmi les officiers officiels qui étaient présents, c'était le gouverneur général, 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 le ministre du gouvernement. 14 membres de la délégation de cette liste à l'accord du premier ministre, on a Alain Chasté, en Taïwan, pour cette observance de la célébration de la Journée nationale de la République Chine de Taïwan. Il y a un groupe étudiant 
entre affinissement étude et étonnement en bas programme national pour assister jeunesse pour apprendre yon l'état programme là te conduit en Monroe College à Vieux-Fort programme de étonnement ça là c'est effort et initiative du gouvernement cette ici pour essayer d'adresser la situation libre de jeunesse qui n'a pas travail à pays. Particulièrement en face de sud cette ici. Le directeur pour le programme national, le docteur Wendy Mosheri, félicite ces étudiants pour trouver un succès à finissement et souhaiter et souhaite tout bon succès à la route yo pour ce temps qui est venu. Si vous avez des affaires de cabinet à gouvernement pays, Benjamin Emmanuel encourage ces étudiants pour prendre contrôle de la destination. Yo. Mon nom qui délivre une grande adresse là, Debra Cooper, oui, monsieur, c'est professeur là, à ce côté les étudiants, pour dire et conseil devant ces sessions et tout le monde. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle là, pour que monsieur autant pour que vous gardez, et pour que vous invitez au prochain, et puis moi encore, si vous avez la vie, quand vous avez posé votre nouvelle à Koyol. Et moi, souhaite tout le monde, comme la coutume, à bonne fin de soirée semaine, et ça, c'est le moment vieux pour cette niche. Merci au Pearl Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers and a chance of isolated thunderstorms over the southern portion of the Lesser Antilles. Elsewhere, fair to partly cloudy with a few showers. An upper-level trough and the intertropical convergence zone are maintaining above normal cloudiness and some showers over the southern part of the Lesser Antilles. A tropical wave located several hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles is moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to bring cloudy conditions with showers and a few thunderstorms over the eastern Caribbean islands from late Sunday continuing into Monday. Another tropical wave located over the far eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 2.30 p.m. and will be low again at 8.17 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was high at 3.37 p.m. and will be low again at 9.44 p.m. The seas is slight to moderate with waves 3 to 6 feet or 0.9 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.54 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.